Stockton uh, Online Congregation. Good to have you joining us here today at the Stockton Methodist Church where we gather to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen? Amen, amen. amen. Beloved, I want to invite you to please stand as you are able and lift your voices in praise and worship for the God who loves you today. Glory be to the Father Also with you. Lord, who may dwell in the sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The, the one, one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, heart whose, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor, and casts no slur on others, who despises a vile person but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. Let us pray. You alone, Lord, 
can keep our minds stayed on you. All we can do is ask for the miracle of a day lived in constant awareness of your abiding presence. May this be a day filled with spectacular moments during which you keep our minds focused, our hearts calm, and our wills alert to your will. Lord of peace, help us keep our minds on you in whatever we do and say each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Rita. Hey, friends, go ahead and take a seat, if you would, uh, here today. It's one of the uh, very, very special days in the life of the church and, frankly, in the life of this pastor. And uh, it's amazing to see what, uh, what God can do in our midst. I'd like to invite Grayson and her family to uh, come up and join me, if they would, please. special, special day and special moment. So Grayson right here and uh, family, if you would kind of circle up behind here. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's good to have everybody with us uh, here today. About three weeks ago, uh, when we were gathered together, we shared the passage of uh, Jesus' bath baptism. We spoke about uh, how it was that God calls us uh, to that moment and how Jesus' baptism informs our own baptism where we carry on the mission that, uh, that Jesus began and continues through his people, the church. That was about three weeks ago. About two weeks ago before service, Grayson approached me uh, before service and she said that God has touched her heart and that she'd like to be baptized. And so we've been in conversation here uh, since then, again last week and again this morning. And uh, Grayson is, uh, is absolutely uh, hearing the voice of God coming and calling her into a loving relationship. And I can't be any more delighted uh, about that than I am here today. So, Grayson, I'd like to uh, ask you a couple of questions here. Do you believe in Jesus Christ and put your full trust in his love and grace for your salvation? Yes. Do you ask God's forgiveness for your sins and promise to serve Jesus as your Lord and follow the Holy Spirit's guidance in living a truly Christian life that is pleasing to God? Yes. Will you continue to surround yourself with brothers and sisters in Christ's church, learning from them and together with them, growing in love for both God and neighbor? Yes. Glory to God. Friends, it's uh, all of us as we gather here today. Uh, it's not just Grayson, it's all of us because she becomes a part of this whole body of which we've been called to. And so I have a few questions for all of us here today. Do you reaffirm your faith in Jesus Christ and put your full trust in his love and grace for your salvation? Yes. Do you continue to promise to serve Jesus as your Lord? and continue to grow in following the Holy Spirit's guidance in living a truly Christian life that is pleasing to God? Yes. Will you continue to nurture each other in the Christian faith and life and include Grayson in your love and care? Yes. To all of us. Do you promise to grow, continue to grow in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Yes. Let's pray. Oh Lord, in the moment of creation, you brooded over the waters that you created. In the moment of judgment, 
You carried Noah and his family through the waters of a flood. In the time of deliverance, you carried Moses and the Israelites through the sea. And in the fullness of time, Jesus was baptized in the river. And so too, Lord, in the fullness of time, Grayson comes forward today. And so we pray, Lord, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon this water and upon Grayson and upon all of us here gathered, that this would be a time, Lord, where we give our hearts and our lives over to you. We thank you, Lord, for your love today. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Grace and you want to put your hand out for me. Thank you. Grace and I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, it is a special moment in Grayson's life as it is a special moment in the life of her family and her church family. And we pray, Lord, that you would anoint Grayson with your Holy Spirit and that from this moment on, Lord, that she would be beloved as your daughter. And so, Lord, we pray that you would uh, lift her up and that you would guide her steps and that you would grow, uh, help her to grow to be the woman that you created her to be. And as her pastor, Lord, I can't wait to see what you do in her life next. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Beloved, I want to uh, present to you your new sister in Christ, Grayson Floyd. I got something for you. Excuse me. Well, it's something to uh, remember the day by. You betcha. God bless you, my dear. <laughs> there you go. God be with you and all of you. God be, God be with you. You can move on back to your seats now. Glory to God. Thank you. It's the truth, friends. Uh, I can't put it any other way. And the best way I've heard it put is the way Jesus said to Nicodemus that the wind blows as it wishes. And you can hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. And so it is with all who are born again. And so we're so blessed to be able to be here in this moment uh, to experience God's grace and, and, and to be a part of Grayson's life in eager anticipation of what it is that God might be doing next in her life, who it is that God is going to be surrounding her with, and what it is that God might be doing in each one of our lives as well. Beloved, I want to invite you to please stand as you are able and lift your voices in this beautiful, beautiful hymn. may not be greatly familiar to all of you, but it tells a wonderful, wonderful story of the Holy Spirit's love in a person's life. to see 
Please be seated, beloved. Invite us all into a time of of joyous prayer and uh, whatever it is that we brought with us uh, to lay on the altar of grace. Uh, Sometimes life is challenging, other times it's triumphant, always it's blessed. And so if you brought any baggage with you, lay it at the foot of the cross and let Jesus deal with it. And ask him, ask the Lord how it is that you should live as we give ourselves over to him once again. If any would like to come forward and have me pray with them, I'd be blessed to do so, or I'd come back to you at your seat. Uh, Let's spend a few moments in prayer. Gracious Lord, what a blessing it is to be able to gather together again here today, your family at Stockton. And Lord, we just uh, lift up to you all of our joys and all of our challenges. And we pray, Lord, that uh, they would be acceptable to you in order for your spirit, Lord, to make any change in any one of us. We ask for forgiveness, Lord, in those areas of our life, perhaps, that We have fallen short. Um, We ask you, Lord, to help us to make good decisions, good and godly decisions, and to continue, Lord, to grow by your sanctifying grace into more and more and more the image of your Son uh, day by day. Lord, we celebrate today uh, with you, uh, Grayson, as she has come forward publicly to declare her faith in you. And uh, having been baptized, Lord, we know how it is, Lord, as Scripture would tell us that uh, all heaven rejoices when all come back to you, Lord. And so we praise you for that. At the same time, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will guide her in the decisions of how it is that she lives her life and that that would be pleasing to you. And that at the same time, Lord, that the people she is surrounded by, her friends, her family, 
her church family and all that she would encounter would be a part, Lord, of how it is that she would grow and that in turn that she would help them to grow, both in love for you and in love for our neighbor as well. And so we thank you today. We, we ask, Lord, that uh, you would guide people as they travel today in this area with some, uh, some um, potential slick spots. We pray your hedge of protection around folks. We continue to lift up this church, Lord, that uh, you would guide us and continue to guide us in the mission, the unique mission that you call us to here in Stockton and beyond. And at the same time, that you guide us, Lord, to grow more and more and more each day. So we thank you for your love. And we raise together in one voice the prayer that you taught each one of us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Brian and Jackie, would you bless us today? The uh, prayer of St. Francis starts off, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Uh, the message of the song fits well with the uh, scripture for today. The Beatitudes, particularly, blessed are the peacemakers. So Jackie and I would like to share with you today a version of the prayer of St. Francis. Make me a channel of your peace. to be understood. 
Glory to God. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Jackie. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Well, friends, I want to invite you, if you are uh, following along in your pew Bible, your Bibles at home, uh, to open up today to the Gospel according to Matthew in chapter 5 today. Matthew and chapter 5, beginning today at verse 1. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. And his disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And so ends our reading today, beloved. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we thank you so much for the word that, uh, that you give us here today. Boy, Lord, at one level, it doesn't make any sense at all. But in the kingdom of God, it makes perfect sense. And as we, Lord, continue to seek to grow as your sons and daughters, we pray by your spirit that it will make more and more and more sense as we continue to grow. And so, Lord, we pray that you would open up our hearts and our minds and our souls so that we can not only just hear the words, but your deeper message, Lord, and that they would take root in every one of us, starting with me. And I pray, Lord, that you would give me the words to share so that I would grow and that all of us would grow. We turn this time over to you. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So, I'm a child of the 60s. I was born in 1960. I was raised in the 60s. I came of age in the 70s, and that's when uh, perhaps I started to experience a little bit of independence in life. And oh my gosh, the, uh, the, the empowerment I felt uh, the first time my mom and dad said that it was okay for me to go with my buddies uh, out to the mall or, or just uh, go and hang out with them and whatnot. I thought, oh, <laughs> the world is mine until I got out there and I, just, I found out I couldn't really do anything. I was just out there. But it was the era, if you will, if you remember, I mean, I'm sure that you do, of the heyday, really, of building these multi-level shopping malls or, or department stores, you know. Uh, we didn't just order things online from Amazon or wherever else and just have them shipped to our door. You actually had to go shopping in order to buy stuff, or at least to go window shopping. And when I was a young teenager and all of a sudden I had these wings that allowed me to go out to the store or whatever with my friends, loved to go to the stores that had these, uh, that were multi-level stores that had the escalator. 
Remember riding the escalators, you know? It, it, elevators, I didn't care for those. Escalators, they were fun, man. <laughs> and one of the great challenges for a uh, young teenage boy full of bravado was to try to, ru- uh, try to run up the down escalator. <laughs> now, I don't know if I'm the only one here. Let's go ahead, raise a hand. Anybody else ever try to do that? Yes, 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 fessing up. I used to love trying to do that. I'm going to go my own way. I'm going to run up this down escalator, and I'd get about two-thirds up, and all of a sudden there's a herd of people coming back down. I'm just, doggone it! Not going to make it, so then we got to turn around and get down to the bottom. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah, okay, I won't do that anymore. Yep, have a good day. Oop, and up we go again until the next herd of people come down. And you end up just riding along with them. It's kind of the way human life is, isn't it? Um, you know, there are those moments, and I'm sure that you uh, experience them as well when you think that it's just you against the world, you know. I know I feel that way sometimes, but most of the time, most of the time, we kind of conform to the world around us. And you know, at one level, that's not an entirely bad thing. God calls on us to to be good citizens. Um, You know, I I believe, and we'll do a study on this someday, that uh, God empowers all government. The scripture would tell you that. Um, I believe the purpose is to create order, create and maintain order in civil society. And so to the degree that God wants us to be good citizens and to live in good order with those around us. That piece of conforming is okay, but make no mistake, make no mistake, the inner core of our being and the outer way that we live it is called to something else. Remember what Jesus said When it comes to being a conformist, he said to render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. Romans 13 speaks of how it is we're to live under uh, human government as well. But to our real core of who it is that we are, God not only calls us to something more, he empowers us to something more as well. Romans in chapter 12 says this, Uh, the Holy Spirit speaking through the Apostle Paul. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And so perhaps as we continue to to grow as as Christ bearers to the world around us, maybe by being in somewhat of conformance with God, others around us. Maybe that's how it is that we show them a better way. We show them a better way. Because I don't know, you know, everybody's backstory, but those of us who have come to Christ in faith all have a backstory. There was always, for all of us, and certainly for me, there was a before, you know? As it is for everybody else that we're going to uh, engage in life around us, there's always a before for all of them, as it was for us. And so, you know, that's why 
Christ calls us to live amongst others. Otherwise, if we're only going to gather with the holy people, then what's, a, you know, what's evangelism going to ever do? The change that God starts and continues in us needs to be publicly witnessed to others. And so when you stop to think about that, then some of what Jesus is uh, teaching here today maybe starts to come into a, uh, a little bit of understanding, albeit the fact that it is deeply contradictory. When you look at the words, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I don't want to be poor in spirit. I want to be number one. Because if I'm not going to blow my own horn, anybody ever hear that? That's right. That's right. The truth of the matter is that the ways of God often contradict with the ways that go on around us. And that's been true from the get-go. If you go all the way back, I mean all the way back to the garden, the ways of God said one thing, but the ways of humanity eventually said something else altogether, and consequences were experienced. And that hasn't changed. That's true today. It will always be true. And God's ways don't make any sense whatsoever. There was nothing wrong with that piece of fruit. It looked good. I mean, that's what the Bible said. It looked good. Pleasing to the eye. Probably very tasty. That's just one example because there's an infinite number of examples of uh, how it is we can look at what the Scripture teaches as being contradictory to what our senses might say, it might be what our senses are fooling us about. As Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians uh, in chapter 1, listen to this. For the message of the cross is foolishness, foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through its wisdom did not know him... God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand the signs and Greeks look for wisdom, Paul writes, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Oh, yes. The values of one and the values of the other, they don't cross very well. And it's because what God calls us to, the wisdom of God, absolutely is upside down. It's going up the down escalator when compared to the world's values. But that's the life that we are called to. And as we look at this particular passage, and as I read it, and hopefully as you were following along on the screen or in the Bibles in front of you, you notice something right away and how it is that Jesus speaks of it. The focus is on the blessing. Focus is on the blessing. There's no condemnation in here. The focus is on the blessing. Blessed are the poor in spirit. And their blessing is that theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. 
Blessed are the meek. Meek? Yeah, the meek. Those who don't put themselves first. Don't seek to have their own way. Don't consider themselves to be the most important thing in life. Those who don't believe the world revolves around them. Yeah, the meek. The meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. What are you hungry for? I mean, I know we got a potluck coming up. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they'll be filled. And the list goes on and on. Blessed are the peacemakers, even in that moment when the last thing you want to do is make peace with somebody because you are so angry and you want to get your revenge or what have you. There have been moments in my life where I've just been fit to be tied, whether it be at those folks coming down the escalator, they're getting in the way of my achievement there, or shaking my fist at stuff going on in the world, or in my own life. When you take the step to become a peacemaker instead of a revenger, avenger, Jesus says there's blessing that comes out of all of it. I think that what he's talking about more than anything else is the forfeiting of the earthly blessing in order to experience the divine blessing, which, by the way, beloved, by the way, is not just solely reserved for an eternity in heaven. I believe very much in what Jesus is saying here is that the divine blessing that comes as we grow in these attributes of what it means to be a disciple, that those divine blessings start happening in this world and in this lifetime. When we become Christians, beloved, we live for Jesus. When we become Christians, Grayson and all, we live for Jesus. And because we live for Jesus, we live with Jesus, empowered by his Holy Spirit to live and witness, don't miss that part, to live and witness in these contradictory ways. Oh, it's not easy and it doesn't happen all at once. And maybe it comes and fits and starts and we screw up from time to time. Can I get an amen there? Yeah, me too. Amen. But it starts there because we are empowered by God's Holy Spirit to live in a certain way when we say, yes, Lord, I am yours. And remember back a couple weeks ago when we talked about it, when Jesus offers this invitation to us, we have the choice of saying, no thanks, I don't want to be a peacemaker. I don't want to be, I sure ain't meek. Well, we say, yes, Lord. And Jesus makes the way to happen through the Holy Spirit. It becomes both a personal blessing because I believe that the divine blessing of being uh, as we are merciful that we will become receiving mercy as well. And that when it is that we uh, are pure in heart, that we begin to see God. And when we are a peacemaker, that we become and we call the children of God. I believe that we have a personal in our heart experience of blessing that maybe, maybe feels like contentment. In the midst of, man, I'm just angry as all get out. And we go to, blessed is the peacemaker. And we offer forgiveness and grace to those who made us angry. 
maybe the first experience of blessing is in my own heart because now I can sleep better. And I'm not in a rage and my blood pressure has gone down a little bit. Maybe that's the first part of the blessing that we receive. But don't forget this, that there is an evangelism mission that is part of how it is that we live the Christian life because the blessings are in the now and the not yet with divine blessings occurring in both, maybe in, to ourselves in that way, but in our evangelism mission this way, perhaps. When the scripture teaches us, when Jesus teaches us, blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God, or perhaps this, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Maybe, just maybe, when I don't put myself first in everything, maybe, just maybe, when I put somebody else in their interest before mine, maybe I plant a seed in that person's life that allows them to do the same thing and them then to do the same thing and them and them and them and them and them and them and And pretty soon, pretty soon all of these people living with the poor in spirit have started to inherit the kingdom. And maybe, just maybe, that which goes on in an in, in in a uncivil world at times, maybe that starts to lessen. Maybe that's part of how it is that we realize the blessings that Jesus spoke about in the Beatitudes in this lifetime. We'll never be perfect, to be sure. But maybe it's a start. And in so doing, as we model what it means to be a peacemaker, or to be merciful, or to hunger and thirst for righteousness, or to be poor in spirit or meek, as we model those in our own lives, and we experience the blessing that comes from it, Maybe those others that see us and experience it through us say, I don't know what's going on there, but I want some of that too. So it's not just about us, beloved, and the the incredible blessings that we get. It's even more so about the mission that Jesus sends us on as we can share this with them. As I've said forever and ever and ever, our mission is to love people into the kingdom of heaven. We do that perhaps by showing them. And then the next step is to train them in righteousness. We continue to Teach them by showing them and by sharing God's wisdom and by prayer and by fellowship, by the experience of the Holy Spirit's grace on us. And then the third step is sending them back out into a world that desperately needs the attributes of Christ that he speaks about to show somebody else That's the mission, to forever and always run up the down escalator and maybe, just maybe, snag somebody and say, don't go that way, go that way. And it doesn't make a bit of sense. Except in the kingdom of heaven, it makes perfect sense. So, Grayson, welcome. Friends and beloved, 
This is the journey that we are all on. Go out and make no sense, but love people into the kingdom of God. To God be the glory. Amen. Well, Lord, we thank you so much for the word that, uh, that you give us here today. What a joy. What a privilege. Thank heavens, Lord, that you send your Holy Spirit so you can teach us to get stuff through our heads and through our hearts. And so as a one who is decidedly a work in progress, speaking, I presume, to other works in progress, we pray that you would continue to train us, Lord, and that you would embolden us by the grace of your Spirit to live running up the escalator, running up the down escalator of the world, and in so doing, we not only show your love and share your love, Maybe just maybe we show them the difference you make in our life. May we do so with humble spirits and meek hearts and a hunger and a purity willing to endure whatever persecution might come our way. May we, Lord, be peacemakers as disciples of the Prince of Peace. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I invite our uh, ushers to uh, present our morning offering. Please stand as you're able. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures heaven and earth we thank you so much for all the ways that you bless us and Lord as we offer back to you a portion of these blessings we pray that your spirit would continue to work in us so that we Lord would grow as a blessing to the world around us in Jesus holy name we pray amen and so friends uh, today I've heard this before, I suspect. Today is the first day of the rest of your life, as it is of mine. And God has an entire world of people for us to love into the kingdom of God. Think about that as we lift up our voices in this beautiful hymn today. season 
something God alone can see. Well, beloved, I hope that uh, you'll all stay and uh, join us together for our uh, lunch here very shortly. But in the meantime, beloved, I just want to encourage you this. It doesn't make any sense, a lot of what Jesus says, of how it is that we are to live in a world around us. But yet he not only tells us to, he empowers us to. And at the end of the day, the most outlandish thing possible that I'm aware of is this, that somebody who is dead as a doornail could be alive three days later. In every fiber of my being, I believe that that is true. And if that's true, then the values and the way it is that we're called to live must also be true. And so, may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each and every one of us to be shared with the world around us. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Look forward to a little lunch. <laughs>